Hi everyone. So in this video, I want to talk about a book I've just recently read, A Little Life by Hanya Yana Gihara. So a lot of people really love this book, but I have very conflicting views on it. I didn't really enjoy it and I just want to talk about why. So a short synopsis of the plot, it follows four friends living in New York and follows their lives from their 20s up until their 50s and how it changes. So this book is basically about friendship, about love and about trauma, about abuse and how one goes through about the after effects of abuse. Our four main protagonists here are JB, Willem, Malcolm and Jude but mostly this whole novel revolves around Jude. Now without actually reading the novel you won't be able to follow a lot of what I'm saying but I will try to make my points as succinct as possible. First thing I'd like to say is if you have suffered from abuse, if you're a person suffering from depression, if you've ever been depressed or if you're someone who's very sensitive to topics like this then I would strongly recommend that you would avoid this book. I read it, I started it on the 1st of September and it just took me down this downward spiral. Thankfully I'm okay but I don't think everyone would be okay after reading this book so I wouldn't really recommend someone who's been through a lot to read this book. It would just be like reliving it all over again okay the very first thing that I did not enjoy about this book was actually its length so I read it on my tablet around 720 pages but it could have easily done away with 250 pages from it see as we go through the novel like as I was reading I felt like certain sections of the novel were just filler pages they were about some other people in Jude's life <clears throat> or one of the other protagonists but then we don't really delve into so much of it so it just became like filler and fluff for me there was no real substance to adding it into the novel another point of why I think this novel was so long was so that it can stretch out all the horrible things that have happened to Jude in his life because if we got it all in one shot in like a normal 350 400 page novel it would have been too much for the reader it really would have been too much now jude jude is put through a lot in this novel he goes from emotional abuse to physical abuse to sexual abuse and all of the abuse he suffered leads him to self-harm he cuts himself and towards the end of the book he even burns himself it was really difficult reading his parts but at the same time while I was reading I kept my mind open because I really wanted to understand that you know I have not been through abuse like that so maybe I don't know how a person who's been through abuse would actually process it how the after effects of abuse would affect a person in that way so I was reading and I think it was uh, the 400 after the 400 page mark where I really began to question I was wondering why Jude was being so apprehensive why he didn't want to talk to his doctor properly why he's been lying to his close friends why he didn't want to see a therapist why he was lying to his adoptive father there were so many why 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 that I really needed to find out that is this the way that people who were abused behave so I went through some interviews that the author gave so I could see her thinking process or maybe the research that she did while she was writing down Jude. And let me tell you, I was so surprised because there was an interview that she gave and it's still up with electric lit, I believe, where the interviewer asked her how she fleshed out Jude, what was her thought process, how did she research him. And she said that she did no research on Jude's character. The main character of her novel who has been through so much abuse and she did no research on him. 
So I'm here left wondering whether you know this person in front of me, this person who I've been reading and devoting so much of my time to, is this what an actual person would have gone through? Is this what I can come to expect from people who have gone through abuse, from the people who try to help someone who's gone through abuse? Is this what it's like? It was just too bleak for me. There was no hope throughout this novel. I couldn't believe that it could be that bad. But maybe it could be that bad. We wouldn't know because she didn't even do the proper research for it. But as much as I felt sad for June, I was angry with his friends. Now, the three, his three closest friends, JB, Willem and Malcolm. Oh, he's very close to Willem in the novel. But all three of them are enablers. They enable his behavior. They in you could see throughout the novel that they knew that something was wrong with Jude. That he was deeply, deeply troubled. He was deeply, deeply disturbed. Wilhelm even knew that he was cutting himself. He even found the razors and yet he did nothing. He tried to talk to Jude and when Jude felt too uncomfortable to talk about it, he let it go. He had been letting this behavior, he had let Jude cut himself and like keep everything inside. Like he just let everything. I couldn't believe that friends could be like this. Because if I would want to believe that if you've had, if you have friends and you're going through a tough time in your life, that they would want you to get help. And they would do it, everything in their power for you to get the help that you seriously need. Even if it meant that you getting that help would mean that your friendship would then, with them would effectively end. So in many times throughout the novel, you know, they were too scared to do anything. Because they were scared that they would lose Jude's friendship. Which was just stupid because if you care about someone enough, things like that don't really matter. Okay. Jude's adoptive father, Harold, such a sweet soul. I mean, I really liked his character in the novel, but he was also an enabler. In fact, a lot of people in his novel were enablers. That were what, you know, that has led to Jude's festering of his, you know, emotions and his really negative outlook on life and his negative concept of himself because when you thinks about himself and you hear his inner monologue you hear how much he detests and he hates himself he is so disgusted with himself it is really difficult to read those parts his doctor also knows he's been cutting himself he's very well aware that he's been abused and yet he did not try until towards the end of the novel when jude attempted suicide to really try to get him some help there were a few times when he talked about him getting, you know, talking to a therapist and you know, getting help from a therapist. But once Jude says no, he doesn't even bring the topic up anymore. It's, it's ridiculous. He's broken his doctor's oath and he's done a disservice to his job. Another thing is, if he's friends with the patient, he shouldn't be treating him as well. So that really irked me. Being from the medical profession, I just... I just couldn't get with this doctor at all. So before I forget, another thing that really irritated me was that they were able to hold a sort of intervention for JB who had started doing drugs at this point and admit him in a hospital and force him to detox but they couldn't do anything about Jude. I just... I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all. Okay, the other characters in this novel were basically used as plot devices. They don't have really well fleshed out characters except for maybe Harold and Willem. And even then, you know, it feels like they've been put into the novel so that they could further Jude's plot. I mean, when Willem, Malcolm and Malcolm's wife died in that accident, it just felt like everything building up to that point, you know, his close friendship with Wilhelm, his relationship with him later in the end, and then his relationship with Malcolm, and his, everything just came to a point so that he 
would go through the ultimate loss. It was heart wrenching. You know, you you've been with this character from the beginning, and you follow him, and you see in the end that the beginning and the end, there is no difference. There is no growth. Nothing happens to Jude. That is so significant that we can say he has learned something from all the trauma that he's been through. He learned nothing from it. Again, in the same interview, or was it a different interview? She said that this was a very deliberate, you know, writing technique. She deliberately wrote this into the novel where she wanted him to be sick in the beginning, sick in the sense like she wanted him to be traumatized in the beginning, and that trauma to linger and that trauma to hold a grip on him till the end of the novel. And you really feel that as you're reading it. In terms of writing, very well written. It's beautiful prose. When you read it, you can understand why that the book was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize. I mean, I understood when I read it. I'm not going to lie. She is a talented writer, beautiful writing. And I read bad books. I mean, I've read Twilight and Fifty Shades of Grey. So it's not on that level of bad. It's just that I do not agree with so much she's written here. And she actually fought with her editor a lot of times because he wanted to keep certain things out or he wanted to like change a few things but she did not want to change much of anything in the novel. So this is basically vomit. <laughs> this is basically what was in her head the whole time. I also did not really like the way the men were written in this novel. Like most of the men in this novel had a very limited emotional you know keep a, they really didn't process their emotions properly jude for one he had no grip on his emotions at all he felt like everything was wrong 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 but i can understand that because he's been through a lot even the other characters like jb malcolm willem even harold to some point basically all of the men in the novel have certain limitations when it comes to emotional processing which is surprising and then again i read in the interview that she states that men have a limited emotional stronghold or strong box i don't really remember the word she used but basically she meant to say that men don't process emotions the same way that women do because women do it better i'm not here to argue whether men are more emotional or women are more emotional but i will say that i do not think this is right as people we process emotions differently it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman another writing style that she adopted in this novel was that it was written very vague if you read a novel you'll not really understand what time period it's set in there's no real descriptions of any cultural events that happen so you can put a time stamp on it so even though we're following these people for a good 30 years of their life we don't see any cultural references anywhere which is okay it's unbelievable because you cannot spend 30 years of your life without being affected by your environment so many things would have happened during that time which would have affected you that's just one thing that irked me about the novel as well i couldn't pinpoint when it started and when it ended there was no you know no definitive timeline of anything and i think this was also very deliberate on her part now I know a lot of people who've read this novel have cried. They've been very sad. It's been said to be the saddest book ever written. I've watched other reviews. I've gone through a lot of writing and everyone's had almost very positive reviews about it. I mean, I would have had positive reviews about it too because the writing itself was very beautiful. I just didn't agree with everything that was written here. I do, you know, agree that People get abused and the world is a horrible, horrible place and you can get abused so badly to the point where you are totally, totally hate humans or hate people at some point. But then there are certain things Pepper throughout the novel that I just don't agree with the fact that he had friends who enabled him, who were able to stage an intervention for their other friend who needed it but they couldn't do the same for him the fact that he had a doctor who he'd been going going to for like 30 to 40 years of his life 
and the doctor did absolutely nothing nothing to help his patient sort out his emotional trauma the fact that he finally found someone he had an adoptive father who truly truly loved him but even his adoptive father was truly helpless and couldn't do anything to help you it this is not a book about hope this is not a book to read if you feel like you know let me just put it straight there are no high points in this novel at all you just start here and it just keeps going down that's it don't ex- don't expect reading this novel that you're going to come out of it with some greater appreciation for life or you're going to feel like you've learned something profound about life nothing like that it didn't make me feel anything like that i read this novel and i was just profoundly angry that was the only emotion i felt and also exhausted because it takes a lot out of your mental capabilities to read this novel to continue reading this novel and you know sorting out your own emotions while you're reading it so all in all i'm going to say i did not enjoy this novel at all i i could honestly not say why other people enjoyed it at least for like books like other books that i didn't enjoy reading i can understand why other people did but this was like misery porn and torture porn so i'm sorry maybe my opinion doesn't match up to yours but this is how i feel so yeah that's about it run done so yeah. bye everyone stay safe